If you weren't fired up last week, then that's fine because we have more motivation coming your way. I'm Travis Wright Colby, the Executive Director of Fitting Up Productions. I want to welcome you back to part eight of the Tummy to Tuck series. This is the second part of motivation because last week we talked about motivation and being mindful about all the progress you've already made, even if you have a long way to go still. I told you you should be honest with yourself about what you've done and be proud of that. Even if it doesn't feel like you've been making the progress you want, that doesn't mean you haven't made any progress at all. And a lot of it could just be in your head. Everyone else around you can be seeing what you've done and be really proud of you. It's just that nagging little voice in our head that gives us self-doubt and other negative self-beliefs that hold us back. And you got to ignore that and just maintain the course. At some point, the progress you made will be so self-evident you cannot deny it no matter what. So I'm going to suggest a handful of ways that you can do that. And maybe you've already done some of these so far. And if you haven't, it's not too late to start building that into your daily practice. So first, we've talked about posting your training plan somewhere where you cannot ignore it. You, It might be on your fridge, so you see it the first thing in the morning when you're doing your morning routine or you post it somewhere in your garage where you might have your exercise equipment. But you can also just write out your goal on a little piece of paper and post it in places that you're gonna be seeing a lot. Some people post their goal like on their bathroom mirror. So first thing in the morning they get up, they see it in the mirror while they're looking at themselves and they can read it. Some people read it out loud 10 times. It's just part of their daily ritual. Other people will put their goal over their computer screen. Um, either on the wall behind it or just if you have a desktop right there on the screen around the, the edge. And so it's something that's ever present in your mind. You might not be looking at it always, but it's there in your peripheral vision and you're sort of just absorbing it 24-7. I'm not necessarily a huge fan of daily affirmations myself, but some people really love them and find that they're effective and it's a similar thing to posting your goal somewhere. You'll see some people put a daily affirmation, whether, whether that's a motivational quote or just some piece of advice that is super tailored to them that they can post somewhere or that they have uh, in a diary or journal that they read every morning. One thing I did a few years ago was I bought a copy of uh, Ryan Holiday's uh, The Daily Stoic and did a, a daily reading every morning of a uh, small, a short passage of Stoic philosophy, which I found really helpful. Other people might find reading a uh, biblical verse in the morning is really helpful to them to get their mindset straight for the day. Whatever it might be, find your thing. And if you think that's something that's helpful, do it. The really hard part about that is actually making it a daily habit. You know, we wake up in the morning and if you're already struggling to get out and get, get to your workout, adding one more thing to do, you know, could feel like a huge burden. But it's another one of those things that if it's helpful and you do it routinely every single day, it will really do you a lot of good. And it doesn't have to be something as simple as reading the same motivational quote every single day. You could have different ones for each day of the week. Or if certain days you have different workouts or tasks you need to do, you can find something to read to kind of get your head in the right place for that particular task. And then another day where you have a different workout or task, you have something else you read. Or it could be a video or a song. A lot of people have favorite songs for certain moods, and that's great. Have a have your motivational playlist set up in advance so that when you're trying to do something hard and you need to get yourself psyched up for it, all you gotta do is hit play and let the music take over. And by the time you get to that playlist, you probably be very surprised what you have done in that time. Another way to find more motivation for continuing the hard work is to look around you and just see where else in your life are you starting to see improvements because nothing in our lives are truly siloed off from everything else you know we all have the big three things in our lives the big categories of what we do or want you know we have our health and wellness we have uh, our work and our wealth and then we have you know friends family and other relationships those are kind of the big three things especially if you're breaking it down into the major self-help categories and all those things are interconnected. If you start finding weakness in one, you might eventually start seeing issues crop up in other areas, such as if we aren't taking care of ourselves, then we can't really take care of our families because we just don't have the energy or you know, the ability to keep up with the kids we're supposed to be playing with or doing the things around the house or same thing with work. 
if you don't have the stamina you built up from working out, you're going to be feeling a energy drain during the day and you might start seeing your work productivity drop off and you might start seeing other issues crop up at work from that. Similarly, as we all know, if you have stress at work or stress in your family, eventually that stress will bleed over into the other aspects of your life too. We all know these are things that are interconnected. We like to believe they're all separate and siloed off, but they're not. So if you've been working out a lot and you've lost some weight or getting stronger, or you're getting faster, or whatever it might be, where else is that playing out in your life? Maybe you're able to play a lot more with your kids or go on big hikes with your friends and family or get, get into new hobbies with new friend groups, whatever it might be, other things that enrich your life. Maybe you're getting up earlier and getting to the office quicker, getting a whole lot of really productive stuff done before anyone else shows up and you're able to leave earlier or just get, plainly get more done and it's, you're starting to get more uh, positive attention from management at work. These are all good things. But, but they all stem from some other change you've made in a different aspect of your life. If you can find those positive things in other aspects of your life, that might give you a clue that you're making progress on something you're working hard, even if you're not directly seeing the progress with that. Again, it just comes down to being honest with yourself and having a more holistic view of what progress means when you're working towards a goal. As you improve one thing, other things in your life will improve to some degree as well. You can also start to look at things that are disappearing from your life. The last thing we talked about is really an additive. <clears throat> As you make progress one thing, you're able to do more with all these other aspects. You're able to play with your kids more. You're able to go engage more with your important friends and other relationships. You're able to do more work. Look for the things that are starting to disappear or be subtracted from your life. As you start to improve your general fitness and uh, health and well-being, your body's going to want to maintain that and will start to crave more of those things that will maintain the general health and fitness and well-being you've built for yourself. You'll start seeing the cravings for uh, the sugary things like uh, ice cream and desserts and soda or the deep fried french fries and chicken tenders and whatever start going away and you'll, be, you'll start being more naturally uh, drawn to healthier items as your eating habits change. You'll just want to start naturally not having to always be taking two steps forward in the morning with your workouts and then one step back with your meal. You want to make sure that meal is not only supporting those two steps, but actually might be another third step down towards the finish line as well. As you start improving your health and wellness and engaging more in important relationships, you might find that certain people no longer fit with the lifestyle you're building for yourself. You might find yourself being more attracted and wanting to spend more time and do some more engaging activities with people who build healthier relationships with you. And you may find you'll start spending less time with people who will only contribute to your less healthy habits. Because not only will your body want to be maintaining what you've built so far, but your mind will want that as well. You've all heard that you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with. And as you're making progress, and if you don't want to be losing that progress, you're going to be wanting to naturally spend more time with people who will continue to help you make that progress. Maybe the people you met at the gym when you started working out. Or maybe they're people that you met when you started a new hobby. Or it's a different crowd at work. The ones who are going to be rising up the ladder versus the ones who are just going to be hanging out in the cubicle until they retire. As we make progress on things, whatever that may be, our health, wellness, friends, family, work, wealth, whatever, we will naturally want that progress to not only continue, but to speed up. And the best way to do that is to level up our game and in invite more people who are on that same path to be around us. And the same goes for them. If they're wanting to level up their game, they're going to want people who will contribute to that around them too. And if you find yourself with those people, it's a very good sign that you're doing something right. So even if, when you look in the mirror, you're not seeing the progress you're making, whether that's around your waistline or just you know in your head. If you see people doing what you want to do, inviting you to be with them, then you know you're on the right path. Even if you don't see it, they do. It's okay if you notice these things, whether that's old habits or people or whatever it might be, starting to fall off from the life you're now starting to live. If you ask anyone who has been highly successful at whatever they do, whether that's whether that's sports, business, school, whatever, they will always tell you that the key to being that successful is saying no to a lot of other things. If it's not something that will contribute to the success of whatever they are driving for, they will ruthlessly cut it out. 
if they need to get up in the morning and get after it and get get to a workout and then get to the office or get to the library to study, they will avoid anything that will keep them up late the night before, like the plague, so that they will get the rest they need. If they know they need to be able to perform at a certain level on game day, they'll avoid the food and drinks that, that will make them feel sluggish and slow. If they know they need to have some specific time to focus on maybe just getting that workout done or getting a project done at work, they will not schedule stuff on that day and they'll block out the time just for that. They'll turn off the phone, turn off all the notifications on their computers, maybe even just turn off the internet entirely so they disconnected from the world and do nothing but sit there and do that work or do those reps at the gym. Other people who don't understand what you're trying to do might criticize you for trying for seemingly ignoring them or cutting them out. And you can't remove all negative things from your life. But you can look at where those people are and what they're doing and you can see the, the gulf between them and you and where you're trying to go. And, and you can at least set them aside for the time being while you're really focusing on yourself and try to make this progress and being able to enjoy all the other things that achieving your goal will allow you to enjoy. Start finding those things that you can say no to so that you can start saying yes to yourself. Because saying yes to yourself in the context of doing something positive is ultimately a core function of your plan. This may rub some people the wrong way, but you can start using those other people as a barometer for your progress. You can see where they are. And if that was you at some point, do you want to be that person? Or do you not want to be that person? Treat them like a magnet. Are they the kind of magnet that'll repulse you and push you away? Or are they the kind of magnet that'll draw you in? If they're the kind of person you want to be, treat them as a magnet that'll draw you in. We all have those kind of people in our life that was like, yeah, I want to be like that, that person, whatever it might be. They've done something great. I want something similar. I want to be like them. And we also have those people who's like, I don't want to be those per people. I don't want their life. And I'm going to do everything I can to not be them. Yes, that sounds kind of bad, but that's life. And you only get one life. So if you don't want to be those people, you're not going to do the things that they're doing. You can have both positive role models and negative role models. And when you see this and you start acting accordingly, that'll help your motivation because you can see the person you want to be or who has the things you want or has done the things you want to do. And it'll motivate you to start doing the similar things they did to achieve that. Similarly, you see the people you don't want to be and it'll really motivate you to not do the things that they're doing. Again, this just gets back to the two versions of your future self, except you don't need to wait for the future to arrive to see what's happening. You can see the people around you today and get a picture of which way are you going. Are you going to be the person who did it or are you going to be the person who didn't? And we all have those people around us in our life and there's no nothing wrong with using them as an example to get going and motivated today. Anyway, that's all I've got today for motivation. If you start building these little practices or just some some of this reflection into your your plan or your daily routines, you'll probably start finding that it's a lot easier to keep that motivation up and going day in, day out as the work gets harder and as you start making the incremental progress towards your goal. Come back next week for part nine of the Tummy to Tuck series. If you've been enjoying the content so far, please subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell below so you don't miss out and hit the like button. That will help the YouTube algorithm bring more people to our channel so that they can enjoy this as well. And if you know anyone who could benefit from this, please share it with them. We'll see you next week. And as always, thank you for racing with Fit Enable.